there's a super easy way that I can record videos. If you create a ton of content, whether that is vlogging, you're recording your talks, you're recording shorts or dedicated YouTube videos like this, you need your camera to keep up for any scenario. I'm going to show you exactly how I set my camera up to work in any of those scenarios consistently on the go. I never have to think about settings and some pro tips along the way, some little gems that I learned just across the years of creating content that I'll share with you in this video. Let's dive in. So the way I set my camera up efficiently is really based on a mix of physical button settings on screen and my menu settings, and then making sure based on the scenarios that I usually run into that each of those are optimized so I don't have to ever think about settings or stop what I'm doing to try to refigure something out, especially once I figured it out once already. Literally the set it and forget it lifestyle as a content creator. The first thing is actually what you may not think about, which is not necessarily any camera settings first, is really gonna be what is your schedule? As a content creating entrepreneur, I'm an entrepreneur first. So I'm looking at what are my days looking like and how can I set my camera up to work for me versus constantly working against me or me wasting time because the battery is dying or something else or just whatever. So the first thing I wanna do is look at my month and break my camera down based on my kind of days that I usually have, my week by week basis, and then and usually over the month to just over the course of the year, what are some things that I usually run into? And based on that is gonna dictate what my My Menu settings are set up. I usually have four of those. And the first one is gonna be the things that I usually touch on a daily to weekly basis. Menus two and three are things that somewhere over the course of a month to per quarter, I usually would run into or need to change. This could be something like a course that we're hired to teach or do something on where I need to go and default to those settings or things specific to whatever is in the creative brief. And based on that, I, I need to make those changes, but I don't wanna do any menu diving, so I set it to my My Menu settings. And then between three and four are things that I'll usually run into over the course of the year. So for example, one of those main things is the recording lamp. That's that light that you see on the front of the camera to notify you that you're recording. Well, I already have this. We have the screen emphasis where it literally has a, a red ring around the screen, but I'll need both of those and I wear glasses, so I don't need that kind of reflecting back. But more importantly, I don't want that shining in the window of a plane or something where I'm in my hotel and I'm just recording out of the window. I don't wanna see that red light reflecting back in the lens. So my fourth My Menu option is simply to turn that off. It's not something I'll always want off because it definitely is helpful, but it's not something I'm running into on a daily, weekly, or even monthly basis. It's usually yearly. So based on my calendar, my schedule, and the things that I usually do, that's the way I set up the My Menu. The next most important thing that I'm gonna do on my camera is set up my memory recall settings based on the kind of content that I usually create 90% of the time. And that's gonna be my all day content days where I literally just need my camera to run from anywhere to 12 to 16 hours. And you may think that's ridiculous, but you can be on client calls, coaching calls, group calls, team calls, you're doing a digital training workshop or interview, you're recording podcasts, you're recording videos, and all of that stuff is at the desk. I do not have time to play with my camera settings and I refuse to. So when it comes to accessories to make that work, I talk about that probably a little bit later and specifically one piece that I built that I'll talk about in a different video, but I'm making everything efficient so I can literally use the ALEXA person, I almost said it out loud, to trigger the lights, trigger the things that I need on, everything that I need in order for my camera to work, including turning the camera on. Like I said, I'll talk about that in a future video, but it's a lot of stuff people just don't think about that is all around you, technology everywhere. So whether I'm on my phone or whether I'm working per schedule, I can set my stuff to turn on and off but usually the camera is something that's gonna stay on all day long. So based on my schedule, I'm gonna set up my My Menu to make sure that first one is for anything that I have at my desk. The second one is gonna be any kind of stuff back here where I'm sitting just making content anywhere else in the office. And then the third option is gonna be for vlogging. Now, based on these three My Menus, those are the ones that are gonna stay on the camera. Every camera is slightly different, so I have to adjust what the priority is. So for example, on the ZV-1 and I think the ZV-E10, I think we only had maybe two My Menu options, but pro tip, you still have another one on top of that that most people never think about, and that's simply the manual exposure mode on your camera. Whatever settings you last use on your manual exposure settings, just that regular M dial in video mode, 
the camera will remember what those settings were. And I use this when I go out of town. So my vlogging settings may be one thing, but I'll go into the room that I may be speaking in. And from there, I'll go ahead and figure out what the white balance should be, figure out what my settings should be for the shutter speed, because now I have the anti-flicker mode. So I can adjust those to make sure I don't have any kind of banding, no matter what kind of effects or whatever else is going on in the room. So once I have those set, I don't have to reset any of my personal, my menu stuff that works 90% of the year. I only just need this 10% of stuff covered when I'm doing actual in-person events. So I'll save that for the room where I'm speaking at wherever I'm frequenting, you know, for an event space. But I'll go back to the memory recall setting number three, just for my regular vlog settings. And that leads me into how I set up my physical dials for anything that I'm doing for video. These usually work for me. And I never, honestly, I, yeah, I've, I've not changed the way I set these cameras up since I had my A6400. First of that is gonna be this dial right here, just to make sure my shutter button is always the record button. Yes, we get the big goofy red button right there because it wants to be helpful and they don't want you to have to use a shutter button, but I'm not ever doing any kind of photo stuff. And if I do need to, the photo option when I switch to photo mode still takes a photo. So I don't have to worry about that because of this camera, I can separate photo settings versus stuff that work for video, but it's all about efficiency and too many learning curves equal a circle. I'm not trying to retrain my muscle memory to any new camera. I literally set up all my cameras the same. And when my finger and my hand defaults to the shutter button and to use the zoom rocker, I'm just want to start recording. I don't want to think about anything else. Yeah, I got the one for the on screen and that's great too, but I'm defaulting to where my hand usually goes to. The next one is going to be here so I can make sure that my volume is always correct. Cause especially when you're on the go, I never trust any of the auto volume stuff for any of these microphones or any of the anythings. I always want to make sure that the audio sounds good. Cause if it messes up, there's literally no way to fix it. I had where unexpectedly some audio interference happened with the previous version of the video that I recorded for this. There's no saving it. There's no saving it. So I'm literally having to redo it now because there, again, that's unexpected. But volume levels, once you get into peaking, there's no way to recover that. And once it's too low, it's really hard to try to recover that. So audio is arguably more important than the video. I think it's more important. And so that's why it's the next most important button that I have on the camera, which is up here. I don't need the bokeh button. I don't need any of that stuff. I need the audio because that is extremely valuable. My next two physical dials are going to be the trash can and the downward directional button. And this is going to handle the auto exposure and this will handle the auto white balance lock. Now that is the most important and most missed feature of the ZV-E10 Mark I, especially when I got the camera and I hated that it was missing because I had it on the A6600. And that's if I'm vlogging, I'm going from indoors to outdoors, from the plane to a hotel room, whatever, the airport. I don't wanna think about certain settings in certain environments. I wanna make minor tweaks, but otherwise I'm documenting. I'm not trying to be a filmmaker. Plus I'm increasing and growing my B-roll library for the brand for natural B-roll that we have of me actually doing this stuff. Like you've probably been seeing throughout this whole video. So the trash can icon is set because that's easy. It's the closest thing to the grip. I know I'm always gonna find it. I'm never gonna reach over. And it's like raised a little bit on this camera so I can easily tell the difference between the two without looking. Like I know this one is not the right button over here. And I know this one is without having to look at it. And then the downward directional button, easy, cause it's the downward directional button. So I can say, oh great, that's the right uh, auto exposure. Don't reset the ISO, don't change it. Just stay right there, especially as things change. And then I can press it again to release it and let the camera readjust and lock it when it's right. Then for the automatic white balance, if the camera picks a good looking profile when I'm on the go, it can just stay right there. I don't need it to readjust as the sun comes in and out or whatever. Cause most of the time in indoor environments, it's not readjusting. It doesn't need to, but it may change if you're recording a screen, for example, and the hue is more bluish. So it's adjusting for what's primarily filling the frame. I don't want my camera to do that. I want it to look good for people, not necessarily other stuff. And you'll know what kind of things you want to set on your camera or for your buttons based on the kind of stuff that you usually do. So just think about like what things you usually run into that you wish you wouldn't have to deal with and assign those buttons based on that. The next one is one that I learned since I've had this camera, which is the my dial settings. Usually the center button on the dial here is not set for anything, 
but on this camera it's set for my my dial settings and if you want to see how i set my camera up i did a whole video walking through all of the menus every setting for video especially for content creators for the zve one we're going to be doing one for the a6700 as well but if you just want to copy and paste the exact way i set my camera up you can download and import that file into your camera and it'd be done in like 10 seconds instead of an hour so i'll put a link to that down in the description and in the information card so the my dial is as i press it it's going to go through three different specific settings now this camera doesn't have a lot of physical dials and i don't need it to have a lot of physical dials because most of the time i'm not pressing all of that stuff on a regular basis it's usually based on the environment and preset settings sometimes when i'm vlogging or i'm on the go content creating and i see that yes the exposure is looking right but maybe i just want to slightly decrease it but i don't want to take it off auto then i have to start all the way from the bottom of the automatic exposure setting all the way to whatever it was at, let's say a thousand ISO. Now I got basically got to go from zero to a thousand. Instead, what I can do is press the center button to go to the my dial setting, which is basically the exposure value that now I can use one of these dials to just adjust the exposure value. So if I'm traveling and I hit that exposure value, I can just press that dial and now the exposure value is increasing or is decreasing as I need it to and I never have to do a whole bunch of button presses, no menu deep dives or anything like that. The second one is gonna be the aperture and then the third one of the my dial settings is going to be for the white balance. Yes, you do have already on camera where you can adjust this, but I usually don't do that. I'm going based off of my thumbs and my hand being here. And if I'm behind or in front of the camera, I just wanna quickly hit those dials and get to doing what I need to do. So if I press that center button, I can easily start making adjustments for what the aperture may need to be if I wanna see more of the sky instead of worrying about blurring the background. And if I need to quickly make an adjustment to the white balance, I can just do that via the dial. Instead of having to reorient how I'm holding the camera, I can just keep doing what I'm doing. Again, a lot of this is just based off of what are the things that you're commonly running into as you're recording and creating content. If you have to do it any more than two or three times in a month's period, there's probably a system or a process that you can set up in your camera to serve you for that. And that's basically what I'm doing. And a pro tip here, the reason why I use the memory recall settings is because it saves so much of what I'm doing per lens. So anytime I'm doing something that's at my desk, I'm going to be using my 35 millimeter f 1.8 lens. Even though it's an APS-C lens, it doesn't matter because it has the f 1.8 aperture. I only need to go up to about a 1.2, actually right at 1.2 on the clear image zoom and everything else from the ISO and everything to the aperture from this lens because of what I'm doing is set based on the camera, whatever log profile I'm using or testing. All that stuff is locked in. And then if I'm using this 10 to 18 F 2.8 lens or something similar, then if I'm doing that for on the go vlogging, it's adjusting based on what is the lowest aperture of this lens. So any lenses that you usually default to, to certain environments, set the settings up to literally live by the set it and forget it. That information is probably the best thing I ever saw as a kid because I'm literally still using it to this day. And pro tip to the pro tip, I use the ALEXA person to literally in those settings same environments, turn on certain lights, turn on the camera, set everything up, adjusting my focus mode on my phone. So I do not have to worry about this stuff. I literally live by the set it and forget it. And I know, I know I've been giving you a lot of pro tip, but pro tip on top of the pro tip on top of the pro tip is to make sure that if you're doing videos like this and you're sending this stuff to an editor, or even if you're doing it yourself in your camera, literally the first thing that's on my, my menu is my proxy settings. And to show you no cap, no need to reset that. It's my proxy settings on my camera. So as I'm recording videos like this, you're doing the 4K, 422, 10 bit, B Sneeze, Hall of Fame, fill in the blank. You're doing all that stuff. Well, that file is gonna be hella big when you're done with it. So recording proxies internally in the camera at the same time gives us a smaller file size. So when we're done with the main video file, a proxy file was recorded as well. And I can send both of those files to my video editor. So he only has to work with the small file inside of Final Cut instead of working with the bigger file, which can be hundreds of gigabytes long if it's a course or hundreds of gigabytes long if it's a training or a talk or something like that. And to show you how to link those Final Cut proxy files from your Sony camera, literally any Sony camera, to Final Cut Pro, make sure you check out the video on the screen because I'm gonna be walking you through the step-by-step -step settings that you need to do that. And it is super duper easy. I'll see you in the next video.